AFLW, who watches it? Me. The more they play, the better it gets. The AFLW show. This AFLW show will be better than any other AFLW show there is. We will talk the truth. We will give all the reviews and previews of the rounds just gone and upcoming. We will talk about any topical conversations on this show. It's a show for the people. This is the AFLW show and it starts right now. Yes, no. Play like a cat. Oh, Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. Go of the day. Please. Tell us, oh, Lachlan. Boom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AFLW show. I'm your host, Cooper, the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumors, and Results. What a week one of AFLW footy, finals footy it was. And, uh, wow, you could say some upsets. The top two sides have been beaten by third and fourth. We had the Bombers get destroyed by Geelong. And we had the Swannies beat and eliminate the Gold Coast Suns. Two good stories this year, the Gold Coast Suns and Sydney. But unfortunately for the Suns, their fairy tale is over. Just in the first week of finals. Bombers' impressive season comes to an end. Geelong's interesting season continues. The Brisbane Lions just snatch it against the Crows. Will host a home elimination, a home preliminary final. The Kangas upset the Demons after just losing them by four goals only three or four weeks ago. And they learned from the first time they kept bombing it to Melbourne defenders. That they did not do. And they threw Melbourne apart. They broke them apart. And they dominated them. We're going to get to all them games and many, many more right here on the show. One thing I want to start off with this. If you know any AFLW players, any draftees that would love to come on the show for an interview or a goal kicking challenge, please send me a message. If you know anyone personally and you'd love to see them on the competition, uh, on the channel, please do so. Message me or get them to message me and or just... Yeah, message me and we'll we'll work something out. I'll greatly appreciate it. Or if you're an AFLW player and you're listening or an upcoming AFLW draftee, please send me a message on Instagram, AFL Info Live. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. Let me get the right banner for you all. Um, yeah, I would greatly appreciate it. There's the banner right there, AFL Info Live. All right. Also, if you, got, if you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G, want me to roast a friend, wish someone happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Um, please leave a like on this video. I'm for 20 likes for this video. Um, smash the sub button if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, there'll be some prize giveaways at some point once we hit a certain milestone. So please smash the likes and sub button if you haven't already. It's free. I'm not charging you to watch. So we'd greatly appreciate it. We had 23 AFLW players on in the space of 10 to 12 weeks. So greatly appreciate to every single one of those 23 AFLW players. And I had BT, Brennan Tarrant from the Swannies, um, on the inaugural Scoops AFLW medal. So a really special shout out to BT, Brennan Tarrant, coming on. Absolutely ripper person. And uh, it was a great vote count, um, a very close one. So go check it out down below or search it in the videos on this channel. Scoops AFW medal featuring my special guest co-host from the Swans, Brennan Tarrant. Greatly appreciate it to the young star for coming on again. Um, greatly appreciate BT very much. Hopefully the Swans can get the job done this week against the Crows, which we'll get to shortly. And obviously Geelong will have Melbourne. We'll get to that as well. And North Melbourne and Brisbane will have the week off. All righty. And we'll, we'll have Scoops goes bang, of course, in just a second. Uh, I'm going to review the, pre the finals just gone and upcoming. And I'm going to do some club reviews today. And those clubs include St Kilda, Gold Coast, and Essendon of AFLW. So we'll get to those three clubs supplement throughout the episode. All right. It is time for the world-famous segment. And, oh, it's world-famous. Check the analytics. Scoot. 
goes bang. Well, well, well. The umpire never ceases to amaze me. I think that's a catch rate. I don't know. Anyway, the umpire extended again, just like in the men's comp and in the women's comp, is absolutely amateurish. It's disgraceful. Like, if you check out my recent match day vlog of me attending the Ruse Demons Clash, go check it out. About five minutes into the video, check that vlog and you'll know understand what I'm talking about. Neve Martin from the Ruse tackles Paxi Paxson from the Demons, tackles her to the ground. It's holding the ball right there. But then to rub it in, when Paxman hits the ground, she literally drops the ball out of her hand from the tackle from Neve Martin. That's just blatant holding the ball and they didn't pay it. And the Ruse were robbed of an opportunity in front of goal there. It's just like, there's so many instances, but it's the one that struck out to me. When I filmed it, I knew it at the time. It should have been holding the ball, and Martin should have had a shot at goal, and they, they didn't pay it. It was just absolutely ridiculous, and the umpiring overall is a disgrace. I'm sorry, it is. And being a lot of these to a lot of these games, um, I've seen it firsthand. And even watching, you don't have to go to know this, but it's just unbelievable. So, the, so do the umpires lift your game. You've got two important semifinals this week, and you do not want to be making these mistakes again and in a close moment. You're just lucky that North Melbourne ended up winning pretty comfortably. Otherwise, they would be more of a big issue than what it is now. Hope you guys enjoyed that short edition of the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. All righty. Let's go review the finals. Uh, week one of the finals. Uh, interesting round. Uh, we're going to go in order. It was the Crows and the uh, Brisbane Lions. Adelaide, 37. Brisbane 39. The Brisbane Lions by two points. Elise, jo Elise Jones for the Crows kicked four and was a single hand up forward, really. So, I'm not good at my catch raises today, um, tonight, whatever. Um, was the sole goal scorer, basically, almost. Um, she needed some partners, Pontar and Randall and co up there. Elise Jones can't do it all. She was bloody good, kicking four um, for the Brisbane Lions. It was an even, even, even contributions from all the Brisbane Lions girls. Um, but if you want me to be specific in who was very good, um, you could throw a fair few names, though, actually. I thought Jade Allinger, again, backed up her good performance from last week. Had another really solid game up a few positions. Um, she was very good. Tali Hickey in the ruck was very good again um, after having a good week last week. Um, as I said, a really decent contributors because their highest possession getter was Ali Anderson with 17 touches. So it was no clear standout, but they won the game. And so there was a good team effort. Tali Hickey, 37 hitouts in the ruck was fantastic. The Crows Marinoff was good again. So said Elise Jones kicking four. Um, Hatchard was solid as well. Um, but yeah, great win for the Brisbane Lions, and they had the week off, and they had just a home preliminary final against the winner of Geelong and Melbourne. Which the Geelong, if they play Geelong, they'll win that, and if they play Melbourne, that's fifty fifty. So we'll have to wait. And they only just played Melbourne at Brighton Homes Arena last week before the round just gone. So, and they beat them pretty badly by 30 odd points. So different stake though at that stage, but we'll have to wait and see. All right. So the next game to go through is Gold Coast 41, defeated by the Swannies 58. I mean, if you want me to pick a side for this year, for the final series, the, the, ro the romantic stories, people say the fairy tale story, uh, it's the Swans. And that's who I'll be tipping with North. This is one of them I want to win. Um, but yeah, Gold Coast really didn't fire a shot, did they? From the start, the Swans jumped them pretty much and they stayed in front. Malloy, terrific. Gardner, terrific. Sophia Hurley, terrific. BT, Brenna Tarrant, terrific. Lucy McAvoy, terrific. Um, Kennedy, terrific. Lisa Steen, terrific. Ella Heads, terrific. Uh, Lexi Hamilton and Cynthia Hamilton, very good. So what I'm getting at is the whole team is very good. For the Suns, though, 
Uh, Claudia Whitford was well held. She only had 14 disposals. Tara, Bah- Tara Bahana, the captain, she kicked four, like Elise Jones, in a losing effort. Um, she can have her head held high. But unfortunately, oh, and Lucy Single was pretty solid as well, as she has been a good tagger for them all year. They're probably the best tagger in the comp, Lucy Single. Um, yeah, I mean, some good performances. Um, sorry, I've just got an important message here. Sorry. Hmm. Interesting. This is it. We interrupt this program for a very important announcement. Well, an announcement that that's not for you. So, so I'll be back in a second. So, let's go watch this great goal from Elise O'Loughlin yet again. It was a good goal from a Ruse star forward. Play like that. O'Loughlin, 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 goal of the day, Elise, Alice O'Loughlin, boom. What a goal. Lisa Lachlan, let's play it again. Play like that. Oh, Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. Goal of the day. Elise. Alice O'Loughlin. Boom. You wonder why I haven't spoke for seconds. It's just a great goal, plain and simple. And you know what? It's a great goal, and that's just a fact of life. Yeah. Look, let me talk to you about that goal. And many goals. Talia Randall kicked a great goal as well. Tal- um, Bella Eddie kicked a good goal. Taylor Gap was terrific too. But we'll get to the Ruse game. Um, we're back in the Swans game. Scoops, come on. Lift your game. Sorry, I was just getting sidetracked there because I was getting the message from an important person. But anyway, that's enough. I'm not spilling the beans. I'm not telling you nothing. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, those Swans players that I mentioned just before, BT, Brenna Tarrant, Hurley, Malloy, uh, Kennedy. The Hamiltons, terrific. Ella Head's awesome. They got the job done. Jacqueline Dupay, who's been a very ter- very good player. She was in my All-Australian team on the bench. It's been terrific for them. She didn't do too much in the final. Claudia Whifford only had 14 disposals. She was up there in my Scoops medal count, or was she? You have to watch. Um, yeah, it's like you need some place to stand up. And outside of the captain, Tara Brahana and Lucy Single, um, and maybe Alyssa Drennan. Um, I didn't really have anyone else. It's really disappointing for the Suns. I've been happy with how they've gone. I've been happy for them. Obviously, they missed Charlie Rowe bottom. And Rebecca Privatelli kicked a goal early for the Swans. She's likely going to be out for the rest of the season. 
nothing confirmed as of yet as of this recording, but I would probably say since considering she was in the – no, that was uh, – that's right. That was someone else. But, yeah, Pivotelli will probably be out. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, Gold Coast Suns, they disappointed with how their season ended, but they had a bloody good year, and to get where they ha have is a good step in the right direction, so I've been sidetracked the last five minutes, just getting messages from important people. Uh, yeah, all right, so next game to go through, I'm absolutely thrown right now, um, need to get my notes back up, so, okay. So, the next thing I'm going to go through is Geelong, 51, defeated Essendon, 33. I mean, for this game, really, Geelong were always on top. They were up for, like, five goals at, at half time, and they just weren't good enough, Essendon. Again, a side in their second year, had a terrific season. Uh, I'm going to get to a club review on them, so I'm not going to go too much into it but in, until then. But for this game, they were really bad. Um, Matty Prasparkis didn't have the best game, although she was still one of their better players. Um, Bonnie Tuga was still serviceable. You need help around those two. They can't be the two that always does it. Georgia Nansquan was okay as well. But you can't have the same three names being your best three every week. You need players around that to take some ownership and be good as well. Congratulations to, to Wush, Jessica Wushner, who I interviewed pre-season. Um, terrific person to give her time, and, yeah, yeah um, everything else is none of your business. But, um, yeah, she's been a great person, and she will be missed from the competition. She played over 50 games. Um, she reached her milestone throughout the year. Um, was good for a goal a game. She obviously, as she mentioned on the club website, she struggled with some health issues this year, um, which, I, which I already knew about. Um, but, yeah, it's been through a lot. And uh, wish we, we wish you all the best and um, really do appreciate your efforts in the comp and coming on my channel as well if you're listening, which you probably are. So thanks, Wush. Um, but, yeah, the Bombers unfortunately couldn't send her off. A good note, but unfortunately not everyone gets the ending they want. Um, but she was good for a good for a goal a game, former Brisbane line player, went through a hell of a lot also while she was at Brisbane with her with a lightning strike while she was working. She got hit by a lightning as well. So that obviously is scary and traumatic thing, which she spoke about in the interview we did pre-season. Um, yeah, she's well-respected in her team. Obviously, I know everyone kind of is, but if you've seen the competition comments as well that she got last night, um, not just from her own teammates, but um, from opposition, from the AFL women's page, which they don't always do for everybody. Um, yeah, so what on whoosh, all the best. Uh, right, now, for Geelong, though, Georgie Prasparkas was good. Um, Chloe Shear, they will miss. She was in a sling after the game. She was out early after getting a goal like Privatelli. She won't play this week, you would think. That's not confirmed, but it looks very likely. So Shear and Privatelli, in single individual matchups, will miss two key players. So they're going to be two huge outs for both sides. Um, they're going to have to need the girls up forward, Jacqueline Parry and co, to do well up forward. Uh, Zali Friswell, who were out on the podcast on the weekend, on Friday, she had a serviceable game as well, along with Amy McDonald, Ash Ashleen Maloney kicking two and 18, Nina Morrison, Rebecca Webster, Michaela Bowen on the wing as well, Claudia Kunjaka in defence was really good as well. Sophie alexander Polly was another... Good player, though, for the Bombers, who recently played a 50th game. All right, let's go to the final game to go through of the reviewing part, and it is the game I went to. Demons 9, Ruse 50. Alyssa Bannon kicked the last one of the their first goal midway through the last quarter. Really bad performance from the Demons. I mean, they'll be better next week against Geelong. They'll probably win that by 20 points or something. So that's how good Melbourne are, and they'll bounce back, but they would be really disappointed with the Roos, how they beat them last time. But I said it at the time that North Melbourne blew it for themselves the first time around. And will they learn from it? Then I spoke to Bella Eddy, 
the Roos young forward about that. And she said pretty much the same thing that they're going to learn from that, you know, that team they'll play in finals and they did. And they gave them a big spanking in the Roos was terrific. Um, you know, Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. All right, let's go. All right, let's keep continuing. All righty. Yeah, for, for the sorry, you're getting thrown again. It's 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 amazing though. I'm not complaining with the people that are messaging me. This is fantastic, but um, <laughs> it's. Just, Every time I'm recording, there's always something happening. Right, Melbourne North, Melbourne Scoops. Come on. Come on. Not, I'm not Goldberg where he taps his head. <laughs> Goldberg. Oh, Bill. He says you're next. <laughs> wow. Oh. Scoops Universe. Acknowledge me. That's a tease of something you may see in on the weekend. You don't you probably going, you know, what the hell is he talking about? No one really knows. I know, but you don't. Acknowledge me. <laughs> You'll have to wait and find out. Um Well you might find out beforehand, but very likely the weekend anyway. Anyway, we move, move, move on. Scoops, come on. Come on. No, I don't have a concussion. Um, this is my show. This is my yard now. Well, it always has been my yard. It's my show. Come on, Scoops. <laughs> but, okay. Come on now. Come on. Right. The demons. And the Ruse, 50 to 9. It was just an absolute domination from the Ruse. Garner, Riddell, Carney, King, Gat, Bruton, Randall, Puller. Again, another message. Hang on. <laughs> All righty. Just hold up. As a good mate of mine would say, hold up on the live streams. He would say, hold up. You may know who I'm talking about there. Um, in fact, that guy might be in the chat right now. So. Uh, mm. All righty. Come on, Scoops. All right. What? Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, as, he, as a good mate of mine would also say on these streams, God dang bone. Phone's trying to play funny buggers on me right now. Stupid. God dang phone. The phone's always like... I, I know this is completely... ...and ladies, but... um, What is it with phones these days? Like, they they try and make these phones all crap, so you have to buy new ones every so often. You can't. It can't be just me. I mean, I know my phone's not good, but... Jesus. Right. Come on! Am I doing this on purpose? I, you don't know. Um, so, right, going back to the game. As I mentioned, those names, Bala Eddie was really good. Two goals, 12 disposals were out on the pockets. Lulu Pullar was good. At least Alice O'Loughlin, sorry, was terrific. Sam Wright. Uh, Sam Wright. Sam, that's a former Rue who's actually an assistant in the women's comp. Sarah Wright was really good. Um, Talia Randall is a very good player and an underrated player in the competition. Just goes under the radar each and every week. Um, Neve Martin applied that forward pressure. Erica O'Shea, quiet disposal game in the back line, but the ball was hardly down there, so she did her job. 
Um, Bannon kicked the Demons' only goal. Kate Hall was quiet. In Zanka was quiet. The two equal leading Coleman medal leaders on 20 goals each. They were held goalless. Kate Hall had one shot of goal that she should have gotten and didn't. Uh, but they'll bounce back the Demons. They're a very good side. Eliza West was dropped for this game. I think that was the first game she's missed all year. It was really a surprise omission. I'm sure Melbourne will make a few changes this week. And I'm sure you'll see Eliza West back in the Demons midfield brigade. Um, but yeah, Shelley Heath did okay as well. Applied the pressure with the tackling in the midfield. Uh, but the team couldn't get it done. Olivia Purcell actually was actually, I've got to give her a credit. She was probably Melbourne's best player as well. Um, all right. So that, that's the finals for week one. Now, let's go preview the semifinals, and then I'll do some club reviews. So the two finals on Saturday night, 7.15 Victorian time. It's the Crows hosting the Swans at Norwood Oval. I mean, the Crows on their day can beat anyone. They probably will beat Sydney. But I'm going to tip the Swans. They're my team this final series. So the Swannies, I love their work. Um, you know, from a side that you know, hasn't won a game in their first season last year. To this year, how good they've damn been. And, you know, with the Sydney girls I've had on BT, Brenna Tarrant, Hayley Bullis, Lexi Hamilton, um, Kira Beasley, um, Alana Woodward. Um, yeah, they, they've been Kate Reynolds. They've been bloody awesome as Swans. And, you know, through a lot, you got Hurley, Malloy, Morfitt when she wasn't injured, who was two weeks away. So if the Swans can get to the grand final, Ali Morford will probably play. Then you've got the Hamiltons, Lexi and Cynthia. Or Lexi, who I was also had on the podcast. They've been through a lot. Um, Lisa Steen, Ella Heads, Lucy McAvoy, Kennedy. They've all been very good. And it's great to see the Swans get to where they are. Um, and I'm going to be tipping the Swans in this. They're red-hot four. I said it when they beat us to get in the eight. They would probably be more exciting in the final series. And they've shown that so far. So I'm tipping the Swans here. Malloy, I, Laura Garner, how can I forget their best player in the comp? Uh, see how she fed in my brown load. Scoops medal votes. Go check them out down below or check the recent videos. She did whatever you like to find out. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she was freaking awesome. Again, 31 disposals. She was tagged by Lucy Single, but did a terrific job. Um and I predicted that. If you watched my Scripps medal with BT, I did say that Laura Garner would get tagged by Lucy Single, and BT thought the same, and she did. Um, she did a terrific job, Laura Gardner. 31 disposals are really good. Um, but, yeah, I think Malloy's going to get more attention this week, but still, I'm going the Swans. Without Rebecca Privatelli, would be a huge out, as I mentioned earlier, but I'm going the Swans there by five points. The Swannies can do it and then march on. To a prelim against the Kanga Kanga Kanga. Roo, roo, roos. The roos were rooing their way into a preliminary final, as I said in the vlog. Go check that out as well. Um, so the winner of Adelaide and Sydney will face North Melbourne at Icon Park the following week on the Saturday or Sunday. Um, very likely the Saturday night. And then the Geelong Melbourne winner will go face Brisbane at Brighton Homes Arena probably on the Sunday or the Saturday night. Or if they want to bring back the Friday night, Nicole Livingston, come on. Friday night games. Chop, chop. Unbelievable. Prime time, you want the more eyes on it. That's, that's a no-brainer, Nicole. Come on. Um, so Geelong and Mel or sorry, Melbourne hosting Geelong at Icon Park Sunday, 3 or 5 p.m. I'll be tipping Melbourne there by 20 points. Chloe Shear would be a big out for Geelong. She was in a sling after the game, so I would highly doubt she plays. Uh, be a brave effort if she did. Um, but she's not going to play support. Jacqueline Paris, I said earlier, is going to have to do a bit of the load up forward. Um, Michaela Bowen's a great wingman for the Geelong, along with Zali Friswell. Um, Georgie Perspart was good. Nina Morrison's been good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to the Demons. Purcell, Hanks was good on the weekend, also got to mention before. Um, you know, Kate Hall, Eden Zanka, Alyssa Bannon, Megan Fitzsimon, uh, Paxi Paxman, uh, Tali Gillard. Um, they've all been very good. So. Um, I'll see them bouncing back. I, I don't see a spot where they don't win the Demons. I'll be shocked. All right. Now, before we go doing some club reviews, let's just look at my recapping from the Scoops Mental stream. Not that, that, but my Rising Star Contender tips. I went Ella Roberts, Zali Goldsworthy, and Ali Morford. Three 
deserving winners. It was hard to tip. Couldn't split them all. You could argue you mounted case all three of them, how bloody good all three had been. Ella Roberts, who just came second in the Eagles best and first, which I'm really surprised with. Charlie Thomas, her teammate who's done who's done bloody well as well. Um, one. She just, they both were terrific, but I, I thought Ella Roberts was going to win. Zali Goldsworthy, as of this recording, the Giants got their BNF tonight, which I'm sure she'll bloody win. I'll be shocked if she doesn't. At least Parker would have been a contender had she not got injured from like round five, six onwards. She put, her last game was against St Kilda, which I think was round six. Um, Tani Evans will go all right as well, I feel in that. Uh, but I think Zali Goldsworthy is, is the girl to, or the woman to get the win tonight. And for Adelaide, Abby Dowrick won the Adelaide BNF. So congratulations to Abby Dowrick, a young mid who had a terrific season. All right. Let's now go do three club reviews. Um, so let's go do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so the three clubs I mentioned before, St Kilda, Gold Coast, and Essendon are the three I'm going to be looking at today. So the Saints, I mean, made a good year. Won six out of the ten. Deserved to play finals but didn't. <laughs> anyway, percentage here, 4.5% or something. I know, I know. But I knew it. The game we blew up against Port, we coughed a 20-point lead up at three good a time. That was the bloody game that, Stuffed it up for us. And in the end, that proved true. The Frio game, they didn't fire a shot. Round nine, shocking. Around eight, it was shocking. They're the two games that shit us. The games that got us alive was the Saints, Collingwood comeback game and the prison game. Um, absolute terrific there. Um, I, as I said last week, I feel St Kilda need to add some support for Jesse Wardlaw up forward. You got Zenos. Uh, Ash Richards, which is a good combination, but he needs some more help there. Patrikios and Lambert need some help in the midfield, along with Liv Vesely as well. Um, but that area needs to be helped. And Serene Watto, Watto Watson did very well um, this year in defence from the Suns. Um, but she needs some support in the back line as well with uh, Hannah Priest and Bianca J Jacobson. Probably needs some running half backs to help complement those three names that I just mentioned. Um, but yeah, disappointing that we didn't make it in the end. It just shows though that we just missed down on percentage and even in some of the wins, we could have been better. So Nick Del Santo done a good job in the end. Um, I wish he played for percentage in the last quarter against Carlton and he came back to back by Adele. So not happy with that. Gold Coast, uh, good for them to make finals, but they got beaten bad in the finals by the Swans. I mean. Some good wins for the Gold Coast Suns this year, you know, some huge wins and some games they were very bloody close in. Like, if you look at the Suns season, they, in round one, they lost to Carlton by two points and they spanked the Eagles by 73 points, um, you know. And then after that, they had a good 12-point win at Vic Park, which I attended over the Pies. That was a great win. Jacqueline Dupay, that's where I realised that Jacqueline Dupay was a gun player. Uh, well, that's a game that probably... Started her career at the Suns this year. Uh, they could win close game against the Bulldogs by four points, which they were in front for a lot. They almost choked it at the end. Um, and then they had the bad loss of the Crows, but they had some they had some good games in the back end of the season, which I'm about to go through right now. Um, they had the one point victory over t the Tigers, which I attended at Vic at Icon Park. Tara Bahana, the gun captain, with the winning point after getting shit on. During that, and, and that's when the Suns' red hot form con continued. But uh, they had a setback against Brisbane. And then after that, was the game that stood it up. So actually, when I started looking at it a little bit more, they had some disappointing losses. The power draw, they should have won that. And yeah, it's just then in the final, they really were disappointing. I know they miss Charlie Rowbottom. She's a gun. She's one of the best players in the competition. See how she fared in my Brownlow uh, Scripps medal votes as well. Go check that out. Um, yeah, they were very good. Um, but, yeah, it was disappointing for them. Now the Bombers. Um, obviously, I went to a fair few of their games this year, so my opinion well, was valid regardless if I went or not, but had a much better eye than some with the Bombers. Um, 
They had some victories over the Saints, the Dockers. They had some disappointing loss against the Eagles at Windy Hill. That last game in the home away season against Gold Coast, they were really bad. But they had some moments where they looked like they belonged after beating the Saints. The Saints game actually was in round two. They beat the Hawks by 19 points. They had a bad loss in Adelaide by 47 points. But after that, they really started to get on the red-hot form. They beat the Dockers by 20. Um, then they beat the, they lost to the Pies by 20, which was a setback on grand final day. Um, they beat Geelong by 10 points. Um, then they beat the Tigers by 17. That was a really good win um, at Icon Park, that one. Then they lost to Essendon, which was disappointing. Then they smashed Carlton. Then they lost to Carlton, uh, Gold Coast in the last round. And then they got smashed by Geelong yesterday. So, again, really, when I look at that, that's not that great either, but they still made the eight. So you could argue that St Kilda was probably better than one of those two, actually, now that I think about it more as a game basis, round by round. But they had some good sides, you know. Um, besides Matty Pasparkas and Bonnie Too Good, you know, you had some good performances from Mia Bush, Amber Clark, Georgia Clark, Georgia Nansquan. Um, you know, you had some good plays. Uh, Paige Scott. Um, had some performance, as I said, especially in the um, Yeah, the Bombers, they would be how their season ended, really. Besides speaking of Carlton, their last were pretty poor. You know, you had the Gold Coast lost in the home and the home of the way season. The Eagles lost at home, and which shouldn't happen. And then the final in Shillong, they were never in it. A few, two or three goals in the last to make the margin look a little bit more respectable than it actually was. Shillong dominated in Shillong in school in the last quarter. But that's the show for this week, everyone. So thank you all for watching. But one more thing before we go. If you know any AFL players or upcoming draftees, or you are one of those two categories and you're watching this, please send me a message on Instagram, AFL Info Live. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I'd love to organise an interview or a goal kicking challenge on the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next week, everyone, have a good one. The most important thing of all to remember is go to the Saints and, of course, acknowledge me. A one and scoops universe Saturday. Acknowledge me.